So there you go. So just knowing this information is money, brothers, and the few sisters that listen. Knowing this information is money. So get this money. Get this money. So with that, I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you were edified. So on to the next video. And remember, get this money. Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Kol Halom Yom La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baracha Kwadash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ. Baracha Kwadash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity, always in charity. And as you see, you know, the, the title of the lesson, as you see the video that's on the screen, you know, um, it's a response to Apostle Gabar's lesson. And um, <laughs> like he said, get this money, man. And I, I played the little clip at the end because he explained that uh, of knowing this is of great <clears throat> riches, man. You know, uh, uh, having this wisdom, having this understanding, you know, is a beautiful thing. So without further ado. We get right into the uh, into the lesson, and Lord willing, I pray that it's edifying. But I'm gonna start out with Wisdom of Solomon, the eighth chapter, in the fifth verse, because it said, "Get this money, right?" And he and Apostle Gabal was going into explaining how niggas in the world got a mindset of get this money, get this bag. Well, what does the scripture say? This is Wisdom of Solomon eight and five. It says, "If riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things?" You see. What is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? And what is wisdom? Our wisdom is the understanding of these scriptures. You see, our wisdom is our Lord and Savior. Let's prove that real quick. This is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 24. It says, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, which is what is Israelites and Israelite foreigners. It says the Yahweh Shai, the power of the Heavenly Father and the wisdom of the Heavenly Father. We scroll down and read verse 30. It says, but of him are ye in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, who of the Most High is made unto us. So Yahweh has made Yahweh Shai unto us as what? Our wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so yahweh shai is our wisdom he is our righteousness he is our sanctification and he's our redemption you see and that's why it's written in the book of uh <clears throat> hebrews 10 and 7 it says then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will O power so we must get this word within us eat the whole roll get this word within us so that we may know how to please our heavenly father you see because from there, uh, got so many scriptures popping in my mind. You know, the uh, apostle got me hot through the Holy Spirit. But let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 5. It says, if riches be a possession to be desired in this life, what is richer than wisdom that worketh all things? And if prudence work, who of all that is, who, so like it, who of all that are is a more cunning workman than she? And if a man love righteousness, what's our righteousness? It's this word. Her labors are virtues. And let's go to that word virtues. Let's get virtues. It says her labors are virtues, right? Now, when we get to that word virtue is moral life and conduct, a particular moral excellence. You see, it says old French virtu, force, strength, vigor, moral strength, qualities, abilities from Latin virtunum. Uh, vert, vert, vertus, moral strength, high character, goodness, manliness, valor, bravery, courage, excellence, worth. <laughs> so this is what makes us worthy. This is what makes us brave. This is what makes us strong. You understand? So if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues, are strength, are 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 good morals. You see, for she teeth for she teacheth temperance. And what's that? That's self-control. That's balance and prudence. Prudence is foresight to see what's profitable. Justice and what it, it, justice is uprightness, righteousness, right? And fortitude. Fortitude goes back to something that's fortified, something that's strength, you know, something that has strength, right? Which are such things 
as men can have nothing more profitable in their life. So this is the most profitable thing that we can have within this present evil world, man. You understand? So that's why it says, if riches be a possession to be desired, what is richer than wisdom? Let's jump over to the seventh chapter and let's read the seventh verse. It's wisdom of Solomon 7 and 7. It says, wherefore I, wherefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon the most high and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her before scepters and thrones and esteemed riches, nothing in comparison of her. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone. This is King Solomon speaking, by the way, the richest man to walk this earth. Neither compared I unto her any precious stone, because all gold in respect of her is as a little sand, and silver shall be counted as clay before her. I loved her above health and beauty and chose to have her instead of light, for the light that cometh from her never goeth out. In the wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter, it clearly states, verse 21 I uh, started 20. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. This is what's going to bring us salvation. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. Because going back to the second, seventh chapter and scrolling down is clearly explained in verse 28. For the most I love if none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. So the love of Yahweh Basham Yahusha rests upon us with this word, the understanding of these scriptures. Apostle Gabar went and read Isaiah the 55th chapter and it says, who have known the mind of the Lord, but we have the mind, uh, 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 who, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm butchering, I'm jumping ahead, I'm excited, Salakia. let me just get the scripture, because I'm mixing two scriptures together, this is the book of uh, Isaiah 55 and 8, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord, you know? So when we were in the world, we didn't have the mindset of the Lord. So like Apostle Ball was going in and what he was explaining, hey, uh, in, his, in his spirit, he was like, I need to understand the creator of all things. I need to know what his thoughts are. And we all should have that same mindset. Well, let's show that our, our, our king had that same mindset. Let's jump over to Wisdom of Solomon 9 and let's read 6. It says, for though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, Yet, if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. So Kobe Bryant was was was, was perfect in basketball, uh, uh, arguably the, uh, the best to ever play. Right. But yet wisdom wasn't with him. So he was nothing regarded in heaven. LeBron James and, 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 and Floyd Mayweather and all these guys, man, they're nothing regarded. You understand? Because they don't have this word. The Lord considers us. You see, let's scroll down to. Uh. Verse 10, it says, oh, send her out of thy holy heavens, her being wisdom, right? And from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. You see? So this is how we know the uh, 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 the thoughts of Yahweh Basham Yahweh For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then I shall judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that muses upon many things. And, and it's talking about this body, man. This body of death, it says that uh, 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 all, uh, all things can't be in, uh, in men because he, he, he is not immortal, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. You see, verse 16, and hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth and with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who has searched out and thy counsel who hath known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom. So we have so we have we know the thoughts of the heavenly father through this word, through the Holy Spirit that he's given unto us. Let's jump from there to first Corinthians two. Let's get the scripture I was quoting. <clears throat> it's first Corinthians two and fifteen. Um. Yeah, it says, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who have known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Yahweh Shai. 
You see? Because Yahweh Shai is our wisdom. We're made in his image. That's what we're learning. We're learning to walk and to live and to conduct ourselves as he did. You see? Because it says we have the mind of Yahweh Shai. Now, when we go to John 15, in 15, Yahweh Shai says this, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. So this is great riches that we have to understand this word. Because this word is what's going to deliver us. Let's get the book of uh, Psalms 37. And let's start at 16. It says, A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. You understand? Because of his word, because of all righteousness, which is Yahweh Shai. You see? Because we're being obedient to, 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 to what the Lord is telling us to do. Verse 20, but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume into smoke shall they consume away. And, 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 they, and that's, that's, that's them. That's their destruction, man. You know? From there, let's get um, the book of Proverbs. Let's get the book of Proverbs 10 and 2. It says, treasures of wickedness profit nothing. But righteousness delivereth from death. This word is what's going to deliver us, man. This is uh, Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. You see? The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright shall deliver them, but transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness. So it's great riches, man. It's great honor for us to understand what we have, man. It's a beautiful thing, you see, because everybody, hey, that's what makes it precious. And that's what Apostle Gabal mentioned. Something that's little, you know, uh, it makes it e that even uh, more valuable. This is the book of Second Edris 8 and 1. It says, and he answered me saying, the most I have made this world for many, but the world to come for few. I will tell thee a similar to Ezra's, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present world. You see? So there's plenty earthen vessels. There's plenty vessels that, 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 that mold can be, uh, uh, you know, formed upon. But it's only little dust that gold cometh of, man. That shows the course of this world. We represent that dust, that dust of gold, that very little. Verse three, there be many created, but few shall be saved. So I answered and said, swallow then down, O my soul, understanding and devour wisdom. The Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai for opening our hearts, for opening our minds to receive his word and to understand these things, man. Because great judgment is coming upon the earth. Like Apostle Gabal read, he read that Zephaniah about the day of the Lord, how their gold and their silver won't, won't deliver them in that day. Let's get uh, 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 Ezekiel, the seventh chapter. It's Ezekiel 7. Let's start at 1. It says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh Basham Yahushah came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord power unto the land of Israel. So now this was a judgment that was coming upon Israel, but we can apply this to America today. We can apply this to two-thirds and to these heathens today. That destruction is coming, right? It says, and end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send my anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense all thee, all thine abominations. There's a judgment coming for all the deeds that these people are doing, man. And my eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thy abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord power and evil and only evil behold is come and end is come. The end is come. It watches for thee. Behold, it is come. And that's why we're telling the people repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And before the kingdom of heaven can be established, guess what? Great 
uh, uh, destruction and pestilence and plagues have to reign throughout this place, man. Because the Lord has to play, uh, uh, bring judgment down upon this place. As it is written, uh, 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 thus with violence shall Babylon be thrown down, man, in the book of Revelation. There is a judgment that's coming upon this place before righteousness can be established. And, and, and that's great riches for us to know that, man, so that we can get right. Because the Lord said, repent or ye shall likewise perish, man. This is verse 7. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thy abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh Shad that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it is come, the morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded, violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness, none of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them, the time is come, the day draweth near, let the buyer rejoice, oh, it's like it. let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is there is Slaki, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon the multitude thereof. And we're blowing the trumpet, you see? We're telling the people to prepare because judgment is coming, but none is making to the battle. The battle is what? The great day of the Lord, man. Matter of fact, let me prove that. This is the book of Ezekiel 13. And I'm going to start at four. It says, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. See, because we're supposed to be putting on the armor so that we may be able to stand in that day and having done all to stand as it is written in the book of Ephesians. But only, but a hey, Romans 11 and 7, like the apostle quoted, the election have attained it and the rest were blinded. The Lord is only dealing with the remnant on this side. So let's go back. Seven and <clears throat> 14 again. They have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none go up to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without and the pestilence and the famine within. What's, hey, what's happening with this corona uh, uh, virus, man? You see? And it's going to be even more uh, uh, pestilences and even more plagues and even more destruction that's going to come upon this place as we get closer to the coming of our Lord. It says, he that is in the field shall die with the sword and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble and all knees shall be weak as water. And what's going to happen when those people flee to the mountains, man? Let's, let, 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 let's get this. This is the book of Second Edris. I believe it's 15. And Fifty eight. It says they that be in the mountains shall die of hunger and eat their own flesh and drink their own blood for very hunger of bread and thirst of water. Thou was unhappy shall come through the sea and receive plagues again. So great plagues is going to come upon these people, man. Going back uh, Ezekiel seven, verse 18. Now it says they shall also gird themselves with sackcloth and horror shall cover them. And shame shall be upon all faces and baldness upon all their heads. And that's that's signs of mourning. Verse 19, this is the point. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fear their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity, man. 
And that's what's coming upon these people who refuse to repent, who refuse to humble themselves and return to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So it's great honor and great riches that we understand these things and that we have such a great opportunity at salvation, you know? So that's my uh, uh, two cents. Hopefully, uh, I hope and pray that was edifying. You know, I was uh, 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 skillfully adding unto the apostle, you know, to Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson for inspiring me through the apostle. I give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Eshalawah.